Hey there, Storm fans, Brian Cook, and today we are playing Modern Twiddle Storm featuring Recross the Past, a card that you might be familiar with from Modern Belcher. The way that Recross the Past works, or what it says at least, is two and a green, reveal cards from the top of your library until you reveal a land card, put that card onto the battlefield, and then put the rest on the bottom in any order, and then you clash and you can return to your hand. Well, why is that good? Well, we run a single Lotus Field in this deck as our only land. And that means that Recross the Pass always finds Lotus Field, which is what our deck is based around, which is pretty sweet. But if we've already get, have that Lotus Field, if it's already in play, we get to stack our deck to win with Ideas Inbound, Cure Through Depths, plus tons of other really, really sweet cards. So I'm definitely interested in that. Uh, and then eventually we can cast Past in Flames into a Lethal Grave Shot. So pretty sweet. It's an alternative to Belcher. I'm a really huge fan of Twiddle Storm, so this is definitely more up my alley than Belcher is. Um, but I do wonder if there's some flex spots here. So one thing I initially thought was how many lands are in this deck? So we have 18 multi face cards or whatever you would like to call them. Um, but we have 18 lands plus one Lotus field. So we have 19 lands total, which is actually one more than I run in Luris Lotus breach, I believe. So yeah, I run 17 plus four Lotus. So we have one more land here, but one thing that I am really curious about is with running recross the past, you could stack it so that if your opponent happens to have game one hate, you could always have like a main deck bounce spell or something that you could then bounce the hate with and then continue winning. And one that I think is really interesting in an arcane twiddle build is running Eye of Nowhere because it's a sorcery speed bounce spell that you can splice psychic puppetry onto. So that way you can untap your Lotus Field, bounce something for free, and then keep on winning without any loss of mana or tempo. And I think that's really interesting. Another card I would be interested in is a one of Pact Negation that you could stack with your Across the Paths to beat potential hate. That said, I'm going to play the list that Colby donated today. Colby, thank you for your donation deck. And this, honestly, I'm in love with this deck list. It looks really good. Normally when I receive these deck lists, I feel the need to like, you know, spruce them up a little bit, make a change here or there. Colby, your deck list was amazing. Thank you. I really do appreciate it. And uh, I think that this deck is really sweet. Uh, I hope we crush today because this is definitely up my alley, as I mentioned. And I just, it looks so awesome. Uh, I'm not just saying that. I truly believe it. So hopefully uh, we do at least all right, get our money back. But I just want to hop on in and play this deck. Colby, thank you once again. And uh, if you have any questions or comments, leave those down below. I don't really have a whole lot to say other than I do wonder if Serum Visions should be Otherworldly Gaze, which is a card I've been playing in Lotus Lotus Breach because it finds your Lotus Fields really well. But here we only have the one, so maybe that's not quite as good. But it does fuel your graveyard for Past in Flames plus other things. I'm not quite sure. Maybe it should be Serum Visions. Um, could also be Consider. I don't know. I'm just not a huge fan of Serum Visions anymore, but that's my own personal bias. All right. Enough of that. Let's hop right on into round number one, and I will see you there. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to click that like button, leave a comment, and subscribe. That said, there's no better way of showing your support than becoming a member of this channel. You get sweet perks, and we get to keep making combo content. The perks get better and better each level you go up. They also stack. To start off, with our Storm Fan tier, you unlock our private member section of our Discord, which comes with a highlighted user profile, and then some awesome badges and emotes for YouTube. Looking for a Cyborg help? Become a Stormtrooper, our middle tier, for two Cyborg guides of your deck choice every single month, on top of 50% off donation decks. Did we mention you also get 10% off merchandise from our shop? With our top tier, the Combo Cabal, you get a free donation deck every single month, 15% off merchandise from our shop, early access to private deck lists, and the most valuable perk in my opinion, videos early. That's right, you heard it, early access to all videos. Videos. But maybe Sweet Perk Secret Deck List Early Access to Videos isn't for you, but you'd still like to show your appreciation. Make sure to check out theepicstorm.com slash shop for card singles and storm swag. Please don't forget to use your membership discounts.
Finally, if you want to see your combo deck here on this very YouTube channel, make sure to visit theepicstorm.com slash donation decks, where all you have to do is attach your TXT file and pick a donation tier. With our epic tier, you can even join me in a video to showcase your bold brew in person and explain the ins and outs of your strategy. Card availability won't be an issue due to our new sponsor, Card Hoarder. With Card Hoarder, renting is super easy. If you're looking to get into Magic Online, Online, there isn't a better, more affordable solution than Card Hoarder. Fun fact, you can rent the Epic Storm for 7 tickets a week, which is just a great deal. There are many ways you can support us, just pick whatever is best for you. In the meantime, let's play some Magic. Welcome to match number 1, we're on the play. I am excited to be playing Arcane Spells again. So here we have Double Land, we have Abundant Harvest for Lotus, this is a keep. It's weird opening up hands like this because it's been a while since I've played the landless Lotus builds and my inclination is always just like snap mole. But like I had to take a second look at this hand to be like, oh, no, this is definitely a key. We have a term on certain visions from the opponent. Two on the bottom. OK. Here, that was a good draw. Let's go get our Lotus. Abundant Harvest. We're going to say land. Lotus Field goes to our hand. Pass the turn. Our opponent probably taking a second to look at the 40 cards that we revealed. <laughs> Jigs up. They know our game plan here. Okay, now it's our opponent's second turn. Island. Pass. Okay. Ideas, that was good. So we're going to play the Abundant Harvest here and say non-land because we already have the only land in the deck in our hand. Okay, recross, that's interesting. So in theory, we could try to stack our deck into the win next turn. So what we'd want to do is go twiddle twiddle, recross the pads, ideas, but then we're one mana short. So I don't know if I actually love that. Okay, what's going on here? I don't know what's happening. So there's two pack triggers on the stack. Angel's Grace, so they're not going to have to pay the pack trigger, sure. They just have 10 damage on board. I guess that's a thing. But why? Like, why is this better than just being blue eye control? I don't know if I understand. Another twiddle, okay. So now we can actually do the recross the past stacker deck thing. Yes. Yes. Okay. Whittle again. And then let's play recross. So we get to stack our entire deck with this. Okay, so we definitely want puppetry ideas 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 probably some peers past in flames here probably a bunch of reach through mess i might have messed this up though whoops i didn't mean to click that recross that was a mistake okay and then the rest of these aren't arcane, so it doesn't really matter. So we're going to put Grape Shot there, and then just like the rest on the bottom in any order. They revealed Archmage's Charm. We're going to put that on top. I'm dead to a counter spell, I believe. And they put that card on top of their library. I'm just going to cast the ideas. If they have counter spell, I can't win it. All right, so that resolved. Psychic puppetry. Does this idea is resolve? Oh, yes. Okay, so let's do another. All right, yes, untap. So I'm going to reach through mist here, splice and untap. Okay. 
This idea is unbound again. Splice on tap. There we go. Now we have triple the reach through miss. Love it. Okay. We drew the grape shot. They're at 18. So we do have to play some more spells here. It was really awesome getting to stack our deck like that. I'm glad we got to showcase that in the first game. Uh, some of you might stick around and watch the entire leagues, but a lot of people just like watch the first game and then skip through to get an idea of the deck. So I do like showcasing it early. And this is one of the cool features of this build is that we can cast uh, the Seagate Restoration to draw a whole bunch of cards. So we have seven floating. So we can draw another 10 cards here. Let's do it. Let's cast it. All right. So we did just draw a whole bunch of cards. Let's cast Twiddle. Got to be more Twiddle effects in there. Yeah, there's another Dream Script here. Untap. Okay. Um, let's splice this and untap here. Take another uh, Dream Script. Why not? Looks like we have around 20 cards left in library. Okay, and I think now is a reasonable time to cast this Grape Shot. Term 19, one more than what we needed. And that's game number one. Woot woot. I'll admit, the recross of the past looked pretty sweet there. Uh, I got a little bit lucky that our opponent didn't have Counterspell up, but that was sweet. So I think we want these Veil of Summers. We probably want uh, Mystical Dispute for like Narset type effects. We might even want the Ooze. I'm not sure. Ooze is pretty good against Counterspell decks. So we're at 67 cards right now. Hmm. I also wonder if you're supposed to board in like at least one bounce spell to get with your recrods. Probably board out the past in flames. Well, they didn't see any of our graveyard stuff, so maybe. Hmm. Just not sure. So I think we're allowed to board out Serum Visions because it's not like a key card in this deck. Like, yes, it's nice, but. It's not crucial, so those can board out. And then we have four more slots. Um, I don't think this deck actually needs Sylvan Scrying, if I'm honest. Like, that's actually one of the few cards in the main deck that I'm not confident in. Because we have four Recross, and we have four Abundant Harvest to find this Lotus Field. And then we need one more card. I think I might just do 1A for now. We'll see how they board, and if they board it in a bunch of like graveyard hate, we can board out the past and Okay, we have Abundant Harvest, we have two lands, three lands, this seems like a keep to me. Keep. Okay, so we're facing this Angel's Grace control deck again. I think I'm just going to play the Turn Timber and try to play Abundant Harvest before they have Counterspell mana up. Here they could have Spell Pierce or Fluster Storm, but they don't have actual factual counter spell yet. So I want that's why I wanted to play it out. And one nice thing about boarding in the Ave Progenitor Ooze is if our opponent does hold up Angel's Grace the entire game, we have the Ooze as a backup plan. Okay. Part of me wonders if there's some sort of like Hive Mind deck with the packs, but I'm not sure. And they just drew and passed. That's interesting. Veil of Summer is a very good draw. One uh, sort of cute thing that you can do with this deck is once you're mid-combo, you can Balagad Recovery back your ideas amount if you're doing well. Um, I wouldn't expect to do that too often, but it is an, an option. Here we'll play the Lotus Field, sacrifice these lands, and pass the turn. Okay, so our opponent has to play a land here. Or was, okay, I was going to say, or they have to discard. Ooh, brutal. We do have one Echoing Truth in our deck. We can get it with the Recross the Paths. We just have to build towards it. Okay. They must have kept a hand on the back of Alpine. 
All right, let's play another one of these tap lands. So next turn, we can play Seagate Restoration and Recross the Paths. And Recross would have protection from Veil of Summer. They hit land three. It's so weird to me that they're just like playing a control deck with. Sure, you can have a getting into the trials. Who cares? Um, like this card doesn't matter. Maybe that's why they're playing the packs. All right, so let's play our Seagate going down to 14 life and Recross. Okay, so we definitely want to start with the Echoing Truth that we boarded in. And then a whole bunch of ideas amount, I think. Reach through Mists. You're through depths. We just want all of the um the arcane spells up front. Whittles. We'll put the past in flame somewhere in, in the middle here. And then more twiddles. Grape shot. Alright, do I want to change anything else? We we'll probably put the Abe somewhere in here. But I don't know if the rest really matters. I'm probably just going to do the rest as random. Act of Negation. That's pretty good. Okay, so I just have to pass here. This is such a weird control deck. So they're swinging for eight. We're going to go to six, and we know that they have a Pact of Negation. So if they have double counter, we're just dead. So I did see an Archmage's Charm in game one. So I, I'm somewhat tempted to just dream script the Triumph here. That way they don't have Archmage's Charm. Okay, so now we can draw. We have the Echoing Truth. I'm going to play the Seagate. And attempt to bounce the Alpine Moon. So it's nice that we were able to tutor up the Echoing Truth. That does feel really powerful. Sucks. We know that they have the pact. All right, they got it. Let's go to the next one. So they're just like this weird, like Gideon of the Trials, Angel's Grace deck. I don't know. Wonder if I'm supposed to board and force the vigors after seeing that. The problem is we only have so many cards we're allowed to board in. Like I think I need the mystical dispute. Um, I could try boarding out the Tangled. Just worry because now we're boarding down to 16 lands, which is pretty dangerous. Could also try like boarding out one copy of Recross and then like maybe one land. We're muddying our deck a lot right now. Game three. So we've opened up with the Lotus Field. We have two lands. This is probably fine. Keep. One thing that I do like about this build is that when I've played, uh, when I eventually moved off of Arcane Lotus, it was because you would have games where you play double ideas amount into six lands and lose. The Recross the Pass variant definitely fixes that. So I think that's a huge upgrade over the previous iterations of this list. Uh, and this might be the way to go in the future if you really want to be playing arcane spells. All right, we drew a, another green card for this Force of Vigor. I really like that. And I'm just going to shock myself here and pass the turn. I want to represent this Echoing Truth or potentially another counter spell for something. I can also just like end step here. All right. I think I'm just going to hang tight for now. Another Force of Vigor. I'm just going to play the Lotus and pass. And hit that F6 key. Alright, no Pact of the Titan that time. So, no Alpine Moon draw. I think I'm just going to pass here. There's a Pact of the Titan. 
Snapcaster, okay. And another Pact of the Titan. So now they have to play the Angel's Grace. And let's see what they do here. They have three cards in hand. I'm going to attempt to bounce the uh, the Titans. The Giants, actually. I guess they're not Titans. It is packed to the Titan, but it makes a 4-4 Red Giant. So I could attempt to pay for this here, and I think that's actually what I want to be doing. Because if they have another Counterspell, I get to eat that out now. All right, they have two cards in hand, and I will pay for a Mystical Dispute. Yes. They're going to fetch and likely counterspell here. They're at 14. That is a counterspell. So now we have to win the game on our turn, uh, because that is the only Echoing Truth. Or I could, in theory, battle get back that Echoing Truth to buy time. All right, so I'm at four. I guess we just start on pier. Up a tree on tap. Past in flames. Um, so I can actually past in flames the. What is it called? Uh, the echoing truth to stay alive. It just might be the play here, taking the past in flames. All right, so how much is this to pay for? Five, okay. I'll play this, go to four life. Get some red mana here, past in flames. Okay, so I have two blue floating. What's kind of cool is that we have a Seagate Restoration in the graveyard from the Lotus Field that we might be able to use as a card advantage. Uh, piece later when it's pausing for a while here if their last card is like a surgical extraction it could be relevant um but it, they only have one card in hand and i'm not sure what it is if it is a surgical they could choose to like just remove the echoing truth or they could choose to remove something like peer or even the dream scripts okay past and flames has resolved Let's dream script to untap the Lotus Field. Okay, and now we're going to dream script again. So this brings us up to six mana. Which is not quite enough to play the Seagate. So we're going to cast this Pier. And then splice the Psychic Puppetry onto it. And another pier. I guess we're going to take that. Okay. We're looking for ideas on bound, ideally, so we can get ahead on cards. Psychic puppetry, again. Pier through depths. And there's our ideas on bound. Uh, grape shot. That do we'd have six mana, seven mana. Not quite. So we're going to take the ideas and just have to accept that grape shots going on the bottom of our library All right ideas and bound whittle i'm sorry psychic puppetry so now we're going to draw three untap the lotus and that was pretty good okay so let's cast this pier at some point it might not be a terrible idea to flash back the past and flames either what do we have here um I think we're actually supposed to take the extra puppetry because it's just plus one mana which is more valuable than these other cards but also oh no i can't take the eve my bad um hmm yeah it's probably just the puppetry i think yes so i'm gonna cast this reach Splice. And I could splice again and untap this land, but you can't untap the same Lotus multiple times. It doesn't work like that. Um, I'd rather have blue mana floating than green, so I'm just going to only do the one. Redrew a Seagate. Okay. 
We have seven mana. I could go up to eight mana now and cast this Seagate. But I think I'm better off just um flashing back the past and flames at the moment. I could flash back the Seagate from the graveyard, burning this psychic puppetry, and I would draw five cards, but that doesn't seem worth it because I lose if I don't hit a twiddle. I'm gonna cast this. So this is going to bring me up to 8 mana, and then I can flash back Past in Flames into Ideas Inbound. And that's why taking the Psychic Puppetry was better, is that actually, like, was pretty relevant. Act to Negation. Uh, so they're all in on drawing Fiery, drawing an Angel's Grace off Fiery Islet? Sure. We're just going to bounce these giant tokens. And pass the turn. So our opponent has to draw exactly Angel's Grace. Okay, so here they go. They have probably a few hits here, but pretty unlikely. And that's it. We got the first match with one land twiddle. Pretty sweet. Stick around. Hopefully you enjoy the rest of this video. If you haven't joined them already, I would recommend opening up our description down below and joining our seven social media networks. They're each great in their own way, but I would strongly suggest joining our Discord server. In there, you will find others just like you looking to improve their Storm game and grow as a combo community. If you're a member of our YouTube channel, you should sync your account to Discord to unlock our private member section that has the latest and greatest deck lists, concepts, and much, much more. Let's get back to comboing out. Welcome to match number two. Our opponent has revealed a Yorion, and we have the solo Lotus Field in our hand. One land, Serum Visions, Reach, and the Recross. This hand is so close, and we're on the draw. I'm going to keep it and just... We have 18, 17 lands in our... We have one land in hand. We have 17 lands in our deck to draw. Hopefully it goes well. Looks like our opponent's capped, as will we. All right, let's see what's happening here. Imagine they're the four color like Omnath Flicker deck and not something like Death and Taxes, but maybe the saga is saying a different story. It looks like Death and Taxes. That can be good. Our deck doesn't have any answers. Uh, that's the land we needed. But Thalia is going to be incredibly good against us. I don't know if we can actually beat a Thalia. I mean, I suppose we can draw the single main deck grave shot into the win, but it's pretty unlikely. All right, Saga's on two. All the Storm Giants, so not a Death and Taxes build that I'm aware of. Sure, you've turned my island into an island. <laughs> Good deal. Draw. I guess it could be like Yorion Merfolk. Serum Visions. We hit the Twiddle. That's good. And there's our Grape Shot. Um, we don't have our, our Reach. They're not Reach. They're Miss uh, Psychic Pepper Tree yet. So I think we're actually supposed to bottom the Grape Shot, unfortunately. And let's play the Balagad. Pass the turn. If we draw the um, Psychic Pepper Tree, we can have a turn three. Like, this is definitely uh, a hand that's capable of a turn three win. As long as I can find that Psychic Puppetry. Okay, so Saga is going to tick up here. They can tap it for a mana and then search their library for an artifact. See what they select. Soul Guide Lantern, that doesn't matter. I mean, I suppose it could matter. We do play one Past in Flames, but for some reason I don't think it's going to. All right, come on, deck. Please give me these, uh, the Psychic Puppetry. Balagad. Okay. Um, hmm. I don't know what I'm supposed to do here. I think I'm just going to play the Pier looking for um, the Psychic Puppetry. Other ideas... No pup. All right, so we'll put these on the bottom, and I'm just going to play Lotus Field. 
No island walk for you. Pass the turn. Either vial. And it does look like it's Yori on Merfolk. Kind of spicy. Alright, so it looks like they're activating map here. Mutable. I guess it is a Merfolk that you can tutor up. That makes sense. They have three cards. Come on, Doc. Give me that Psychic Puppetry. Draw. Turn Timber. Uh, theoretically, we actually have the win here if our opponent doesn't have anything. So what we can do is we can shock ourselves or bolt ourselves, cast the recross, whittle, and then draw into the puppetry and just try to win the game. So I think we go for that here. All right, green, blue, and let's play the recross. This might be what this deck needed. Like, this feels powerful. Okay, does this resolve or are you going to force a negation it? It's pretty interesting that Modern just has like a couple decks built around it that just play three mana stack your deck. <laughs> All right, so they're attempting to hit force off the soul guide, it looks like. And they did hit the force or they were looking for a blue card. Uh, so the recross is countered. And what we could do now is like twiddle into Balagad for peer i don't know if i even think that's worth it i think i might just cast a reach here because like i just have to find the puppetry and we drew another reach pass the turn okay vial up to four minamo school at water's edge another harbinger of the tides two cards in our opponent's hand at this point this uh, Master of Waves? It is! The Waves have been mastered. Now they have one card in hand. So they're telling it, me, hey, you have a window here. Good luck killing me. Um, and we're going to have to try to turn on Visions. All right, let's turn on Visions. Dreams Grip and another Recross. That, so that's pretty interesting. Um, I think we actually want both of these let's let's think this through so i can play the seagate uh restoration and then draw into these with the ideas inbound so then i would tap this to untap the lotus field recross floating one again and then we have these so yeah i think this is actually a win okay so we're gonna cast ideas the the wrong way without the psychic puppetry and there it is Okay, so now this is going to be a cake. Cake walk. Who doesn't love cake? All right, so we're going to bolt ourselves here going to seven. Whittle, untap the lotus field. Yes. Add blue. And then we can untap lotus field now, just so I can feel a little safer about myself. And cast recross the paths. Easy. Love it. Ideas. Ideas. Play all these. Put all these peers in there. It's fine. Um, take the grape shot. Past in flames. Reach through mist. And honestly, the rest of it just doesn't matter. So we're going to click any order. They have a chalice of the void on top. Good to know. So they have chalice in their deck. So we're going to want to bring in, you know, some heat. And now we'll tap three mana and psychic puppetry splice, you know, untap this lotus field. Okay, so. They're at 20. We have some spells to cast. Yes. And another ideas inbound. Yeah, this might be the way to build the arcane build. Like, this feels really good. Okay, untap. Okay, another reach through mist here. I actually just got my fourth Japanese foil reach through mist. It took me over a year to find it, but I finally found one. And I didn't have to pay an arm and a leg. It was only $10. 
Like I was willing to pay more money, but I, I just found it for a real price, which was kind of nice. Uh, we'll take Seagate Restoration, why not? Okay, so this is going to put us up to six mana. Yes. Uh, and now we can Peer, which is a break even. Take the Dream's Grip. Yes. Here again. Okay. Take a Twiddle. All right, so this is six mana. We'll Twiddle here. Yes. Twiddle again. Well, I guess I don't need to because it's one less card I draw if I uh, cast Twiddle first. We just drew a whole bunch of cards, untap our Lotus Field, and let's just keep it moving. Okay. Four Twiddles down here, Storm number 18. This is Storm 19. Untap again. All right, so Storm 21 Grape Shot. Boom! Love it. Woot woot. Yeah, I am really impressed by this. I might have to pick up what I'm missing out of this build uh, for paper. I have a lot of it, uh, but there's a few, admittedly, a few cards I just don't have in paper. Um, what don't I have? I have all of the first row. I have the scryings from Pioneer, but in Pioneer, I try to do all sets with the stamp on them. So I'd probably want to get original uh, Sylvan scryings if that was the case. I definitely don't own these, and I don't own Recross. And I have three Seagates and zero Turn Timbers. And I have the entire sideboard minus Force of Vigor, so it's not even that many cards I'd have to get. Anyway, back to sideboarding. You don't care about what cards I own. So they're on Merfolk with Chow's the Void, Force of Negation. So I don't think that this is an Ave matchup, but I do think we want Veil of Summer. Maybe we want Disputes. The Force of Vigor seems pretty strong again. So once again, that's seven cards. We're going to board out the Visions. I think we're probably okay to board out like one Recross and then one of these things again. Maybe if you just do two force. Or maybe I just do two echoing truth instead. Let's try this out. Okay, so we've opened up the Seagate Restoration and another land. We don't have any access to Lotus Field here, but the rest of the hand seems pretty good to me. Is this a hand that I'm supposed to mulligan? We have the answer to Chalice of the Void. Hmm, tough call. They're taking a mulligan. I think I'm going to keep it and live a little dangerously. We can also cast Ideas and Bound just as a glorified careful study to fix up our hand. Muta Vault. All right, no Aether Vial. That's a good sign. Another Puppetry. Didn't really need that. So we're just going to play Slendy Isle and pass. On turn two, we can play the Seagate Reborn untapped, and then on their upkeep, tap their land with Reach Through Mist and Splice. Okay, so it looks like they're just on beatdown mode. Draw. Whittle. So it's actually more damage if I play this untapped. <laughs> so I think here I'm just going to play the reach. So we drew a bunch of harvest, which means if we draw a green source, we have our lotus. There's a saga. Okay. And they're on the beatdown plan. So we're going to go to 16. Draw. Recross is not a green source, so I think here I'm going to just play ideas as bad careful study, looking for that green land. 
we did not hit oh my um so we did draw a land in slow division but i really wanted a green land so now we have to discard and i think i'm going to discard one of these puppetries honestly i don't i think we can afford to discard the recrods and tough call maybe the twiddle that hurt saga goes up to two i guess maybe i'm supposed to board enforce a vigor because maybe they're trying to chalice on to me nope was chalice someone the whole time all right <laughs> okay so yeah, maybe I'm supposed to board in Force of Vigor so I don't lose the Chalice on 2. Another recross, okay. Um, hmm. Just going to cast another Ideas Amount, I think. Still no green source. Ugh. All right. So... I guess I can just discard these harvests in the reach. Like, what if we just don't care about the chalice? At least for now. Okay. What's kind of funny about this is that we play more green sources than we do blue source. And we're roughly 33% of the way through our deck. Old guy landed. Actually, maybe I wasn't supposed to ideas. I forgot that Peer in this deck can find lands. I wasn't thinking about that until now. Maybe I should have been casting Peer this whole time. All right, so we're being knocked down to 12. Draw. Dispute. What's Peer? Found Balagad. Things that we're putting ideas in the bottom, though. I guess we're about to shuffle with the Sylvan. All right, so that's a 3-3. Three, three. They make another one on their turn, so that's a 4-4. Four, four. They search for an artifact, it's a 5-5. Five, five. So I have to Echoing Truth the Construct tokens, or else I'm dead. All right, and they're activating. What are you searching up here? Map, okay. And they're just going beat down, so I'm going to take seven down to five. All right. Draw. I think I just have to bounce the constructs. And if they fight over this, we have mystical dispute. Okay. What stinks about this place that I'm not playing Sylvan Scrying for Lotus this turn. Adawara, sure. They have two cards in hand. Something they could have done is use map for another Muta Vault. So that means that they might have another force in their hand. Let's play the Sylvan Scrying. Get Lotus, play Lotus. Question is, do I sacrifice the green sword here? I don't even know if it matters. So I'm gonna attempt to play recross here. I think they have two cards. Recross the paths, and that just resolves. Okay. Ideas unbound. Is inbound. We can't do uh, reach through mist because it's still convert a mana cost one in the eyes of Chalice. Here, here, and the Soul Guide Lantern's a little bit awkward because normally we don't care about Chalice on one or Soul Guide, but the fact that they have both is it does matter. Um, I guess I have another Echoing Truth, actually, so we can put that in there. And then that's probably going to open up a lot more. Okay. 
Sure. I don't know if this really matters anymore at this point, but I'm just clicking cards. And then I think the rest can be random. Harbinger of the Tides. Put that on top. And pass the turn. Uh, Brazen Borrower, we're dead. Okay. D-E-D, -E -D, dead. Took too long to find that green. All right, so... I guess maybe they should just be Force of Vigor. What do I board out? Should it just be the Past in Flames? Like, do I just not need that card here? I think that's actually pretty reasonable against, like, their Soul Guide Lantern. Let's do this. I love playing these Arcane builds. I feel like it's like a work of art every time you win. <laughs> uh, it reminds me a lot of, like, early Harvest combo. All right, so we're on the play for game number three. And this hand seems pretty reasonable. Keep. When it takes a mulligan to six. All right, so I'm going to start this game off by... Actually, no, I don't need to deal myself three damage. I can just play the battle again. I was going to play the Churn Timber into Abundant Harvest, but I don't think that's necessary. Island. Vile, sure. Draw. And another Abundant Harvest. That's sweet. So if they force a negation this, that's a win. We'll say land. Get the Lotus. And... I will bolt myself here. Or do I want to keep the green card? I guess I've already committed. Let's just play the Abundant Harvest. We'll say non-land. Ideas isn't a bad one. Okay. We do still need a Psychic Puppetry. Mute of Alt. Chalice of the Void. So, this is a little bit risky, but I'm going to force a Vigor here. And the reason it's risky is they're a Merfolk deck, so they could have a Curse Catcher, but I think I'm just supposed to go for it. Am I going to get Curse? Don't do Okay, it's just High Chamber. <laughs> Oh, uh, that would have been bad. Okay, so Lotus. Still need that uh, psychic puppetry, but I feel like we're in decent shape at the moment. Three cards in hand. There's going to attack for three. Draw. Hmm. Reach through mists. Play land pass. Up to four cards at this point. Another tide shaper. Chalice on one. Yep. Okay, draw. Guess we can hard cast it on their end step. I guess I'd, I'd probably want to pick my window. I don't want them to have mana up, right? But we also might be able to hit uh, like an Urza Saga or something with it. I just don't want to blow it up for one. Like hitting one permanent doesn't really feel worth it. And it's not like I have the tools to go off immediately anyway. All right, so we're at 11. And they're just holding up uh, Force Negation. Here, okay, that's a good one. All right, so we're going to nine. Play Pier. We found the puppetry. Good deal. Four cards still in hand. Mystical Dispute's probably a card we're really, really interested in. Another turn timber. I'm just going to play that out. I like the idea of building up to mana in case we can resolve the Seagate Restoration. But maybe that's just a pipe dream that I should let go of. Alright, so they're swinging for two at seven. I'm going to take another draw step here. 
Okay, I'm going to play the Seagate. I wasn't going to, but I think it, my expectation of building up to um, 7 mana when there's a Chow Sound 1 in play is a little bit unrealistic without Twiddle effects or Reach Through Mists. We're at 5. So I'm dead to an end step, uh, what is it called? I think that killed me in game two. I can't remember. Brazen Borrower, there we go. We're attempting to blow up the Chalice. Counter target spell, I was not expecting that. All right, so they still have Force of Negation available. Valigid Recovery, okay. I don't know if that's actually any good or not, but certainly an option. Ideas inbound. Yes. Ideas inbound. Hell yeah. Okay, so... I'm going to cast the reach through, or yeah, peer through depths here, I mean. I want to be able to use up some of this green mana. Possibly find uh, protection. So we have two Mystical Disputes in our deck. Those are cards I'm interested in. Not sure what the play is here. Should I just take the Salundi Vision? It doesn't feel great. I'm going to take the Seagate. So the benefit of taking Seagate here is that if I get to 7 mana suite, or I can play it as an untapped blue source, which does have value. All right, so ideas inbound, we're gonna splice. Grape shot, okay. We hit the mystical dispute. Really wish I had echoing truth right now. Threats from four, we're so far away. From seven psychic puppetry. Yeah, I'm like so far away from that. It's not realistic. So I could bail again back ideas. Hmm. I wonder if there's also a way of winning where we like bail again back the grape shot. But the problem is I, my hand is all one mana cards. And if I pass the turn, I'm going to have to discard my hand. And I boarded out the pass and play. But I have to discard nine cards. So I can go Seagate into... Okay, I think I found a way that we could potentially win this. It's going to be tough, but... Um, I can go Seagate Restoration. Play it on tap. Go to True Life. Now I get back the... Force of Vigor, hard cast it. Well, before I hard cast it, Psychic Puppet drew to make one mana and then start twiddling. Yeah, that's got to be the line. Okay. So it took me a little bit, but I found the line. And it's dangerous. Uh, so hold on, cancel. At blue. I don't know. We'll do this. It's fine. Yes. Green, Valley Good Recovery, getting back Force of Vigor. Okay. Force of Vigor, the Chalice. All right, and now we twiddle the Lotus. All right. The doors have opened. Dreams Grip, untap Lotus. Am I going to cast a Tangled for Hedron? For Storm? You never know. Um, so I think we're supposed to add green here. Play the Abundant Harvest at Storm 10. Non-land. Dispute is not what we needed. So I have seven cards in hand, which is not enough. And we will have to discard um, everything. So I think maybe I fizzled. I needed to hit a, a cantrip there. Hmm. Okay, so it's pretty free to untap this. Whittle. 
My spells can't be countered. Well, add red here. Play this card. Ooh, I messed up. Because I can't dispute my own stuff. Yeah, I'm probably just dead here. Well, I guess I could have disputed it. I could have disputed once there. Uh, so I missed out on one storm. My bad. So I could have storm 16 instead. We'll kill one of each of these. I point the rest at them. And then we have to discard the two disputes. And I technically have a blocker for the mutable, but I've realistically just lost this game. I mean, I found a really cool line to potentially stay in it, but we needed the abundant harvest to not stink. <laughs> oh, well, so I, I think we're about to be one and one. Yeah, we're on chump blocking duty. I'm not even sure draw like I don't think I have ideas amount left in my dock. One, two, three. So I guess I have one idea, so it'd have to be ideas into the nuts. This is not going to do it. Although I could hard cast it, so we should probably do that. Ugh. Oh, are you kidding me? I can't believe I whiffed. So unlucky. So, so unlucky. We're one and one. That was a really sweet round despite losing. It was a lot of fun. Uh, maybe I might have misplayed. I'm not sure. I don't think I did, but maybe in hindsight, if I went back and rewatched, let me know what you think. But for now, we're going to head on over to match number three. Playing your favorite combo deck and paper just got so much easier with the Epic Storm mini token pack. You can pick one up at theepicstorm.com slash shop for $13. It includes 64 double-sided mini tokens. That's 128 tokens total. And they include 10 black, 10 blue, 10 red, 5 green, 5 white, 3 colorless, 20 storm counters. That means that you can count your way all the way up to 20 for Grape Shot everyone's favorite storm wind condition, a galvanic relay exile indicator, four treasure tokens for strike it rich, and then 10 monk tokens for our vintage friends. It also has slime time live, eighth progenitor ooze tokens with the power toughness already built in to make playing in paper so much easier. No fumbling around with dice, we've got you covered. Make sure to go grab those if you're playing modern. And then squirrels versus goblins, chatterstorm versus empty the warrens, the battle of the ages. You definitely need 20 squirrel tokens and 20 goblin tokens. You're going to love this mini token pack, I promise. And once again, you can grab that at theepicstorm.com slash shop. All right, we're back and we are facing Raytown games. We're on the draw. They've taken a mulligan. We have turn temper symbiosis. We have recross, but... The rest of our hand doesn't really do anything because we can't cast these center visions. Recross doesn't seem great here when we only have the one land. I think we're supposed to ship it. All right, so this is a five, six land hand. Um, I don't know. I think we're supposed to go to five. Okay, so keep. we need to keep at least two lands. So the Seagate and the turn, uh, turn Timber Symbiosis. I think we could probably get rid of a Pier. So I think it's like Pier and Ideas. And the reason that you're bottom Ideas is that you would keep Ideas if you had access to, um, what is it called? Lotus Field. But... I should know that, right? The Lotus Field, the card or deck is based around that I play in like several different formats. But um, if you have access to that, you can afford to bottom the server engines, but we don't. And then obviously I draw Sylvan's Classic. We're going to Lightning Bolt ourselves here and cast this vision. Okay. Um, I think I'm going to keep this extra ideas. Pass the turn. Burning Catacombs. So they're on Shadow. I imagine that this is a pretty tough matchup. Or at least I'm assuming that it's Shadow. Could be wrong with the Arid Mesa. Draw. Lightning Bolt ourselves again. Down to 14 life. Who's the real Shadow deck? 
grab that Lotus Field and pass the turn. So our best draw by far would be a Twiddle on it. Because if we drew Twiddle, we could at least attempt a turn three win. And they're just going to pass the turn, okay? Seagate. Sacrifice those and pass. So we don't have to go for it, by the way. If our opponent just draws and passes again, we can use the Reach Through Mist on their end step to tap the Watery Grave with Psychic Puppetry. Yeah, so they're on seven cards. So I get to double Reach now and tap up to two lands. So eight cards. I think I just let them discard here. Ooh, the reanimator. All right, so we're going to change this up a little bit. Are we going to fetch? Oh, okay. So, um, okay, so we're going to double splice onto this reach. We're going to untap Lotus and tap the watery grave. Yes. Yes. Okay. That worked out pretty well. And they're up to eight again. And I'm going to do the same thing here where tap the Mesa, untap our Lotus Field. And I drew another Reach Through Mist. Okay, so I think now we have our window to go off. Facing this Reanimator deck. Draw three Crods. So let's splice the Psychic Puppetry. This makes a mana. So now we're up to five mana. We drew Sylvan Scrying. That doesn't do a whole lot here. So we can't quite win with the Recross yet, but we're almost there. All right, untap. So now I can bolt myself again, going down to eight. And now we can play the Recross into the. I guess I had double Psychic Puppetry earlier. I actually could have done it. I just didn't. Okay, so we'll put the ideas up here. And why not? We'll grab the group shot in the Past and Flames now. Reach through Mist. All four of these peer through Depths. And our opponent's going to concede the game. Woot woot! Game one over Reanimator. Let's grab these Veil of Summers. I don't think we want Mystical Dispute, but I could be wrong. Yeah, it's, I guess I could board in like one Echoing Truth as well, just for like backup. Maybe just brought out the Serum Visions. I think I'm fine with this. Okay, so we have Sylvan Scrying for the Lotus. We have double Recrods. This seems fine. Playline of the Void. Little do they know. I don't care. That's fine. Draw. Another Sylvan. I would like to Lightning Bolt myself so that way I can protect myself using Veil of Summer. Concealed Courtyard, and it looks like they're just passing the. Looks like a four color reanimator variant based on their fetches. All right, and now we play the Sylvan Scrying to go get our Singleton land in our deck. If they counter this, that's a win. They did not. Using their Arid Mesa. Hallowed Fountain. Okay. They're being faithful to their mending, going up to 21 life. There's Emissary. So I did board in the Echoing Truth, and that's going to be relevant here, because now we're not just dead to it naming. Yep. And they did name Sorcery. Okay. Happy accident. Um, I think I'm supposed to just peer here looking for the Psychic Puppetry, and then play my Lotus. We did not find Puppetry. I'll take a Twiddle. Okay, and then the rest can go on the bottom, play the Lotus Field, and pass the turn. 
So the emissary is going to hit us to six and put us to eight, which means that we're not necessarily dead. We could go to two life. Um, just worth noting. Draw another grip. So I'm dead if they find another way to. Um, hold on, use your words, Brian. If they find a way to put Archon into play. I think I'm going to play it slow. I feel like if I rush it here, I'm going to fizzle. So I'm just going to try to pass. All right. And I could also twiddle this series I'm a series to buy time, but I'm not going to do that. They have three cards. Marsh flats. Okay. 14 life. Is this a hard cast grief? It is. Let's protect ourselves with a veil of summer. Summertime magic. And uh, the tangled florhedron. Not a card we really needed. All right, it's go time. And we do it. Draw. Hmm. So that gets us into our recross pile, which is actually pretty valuable. We need our opponent to not have any interaction. Might be a tall ask. Okay. And then recross the pads. We'll leave one green floating, I think. Or maybe that's just a miss. Yeah, I should just use them. Because if this gets countered, I can't win anyway. Like, I just can't beat a counter spell. All right, it looks like that resolves. So, what we're going to do is we're going to put Psychic Puppetry as our top card. And then a whole bunch of ideas mound. Okay, and then some Reach Through Mists. And then let's put the important cards in here. So, Echoing Truth, Past in Flames. Oh, I shouldn't have done Past in Flames. There's a Ley Line in play. My bad. Um. Then we can do peer through depths and then twiddles and then actual twiddle. This deck is so sweet. All right. So, and then the rest can go in any order. Burden catacombs is their top card. We will leave psychic puppetry on top. This card is very good. All right, so let's just play the reach to get our psychic puppetry. And then splice ideas and bound. All right, that resolve, that's a good sign. Ideas again. All right, so now we're going to use the, the reaches. And the reason to play the reach here is for some reason, let's say your opponent's a crazy person and they've been sitting on a counter spell and decided not to use it. I don't get punished by um, them countering at this point if I just make a little bit of extra mana with these reaches. Okay, so now we keep going. So this is going to draw a grape shot. All right. Now ideas again. All the cards. Yes. All right, ideas. Stacking your deck into ideas is just not fair. <laughs> like, this is just so sweet. One land twiddle storm. Love it. Okay, so let's bounce this Sears Emissary now. And now they're choosing to fight. What is going on here? Hmm. Why didn't you target the Sierra's Emissary instead? <laughs> um, oh, because they can hit the Grape Shot. That's why. So I didn't side in Mystical Dispute. Do I have an out to this? I don't think I do. I only have the one win condition. So this is just a good play by the opponent here with the ley line. 
I mean, I don't think we have an out, but we should look at our top 20-ish cards and make sure. Okay, let's see what our options are. Like I said, I don't think I have an out, but I just want to make sure. Guess we take a twiddle. All right, and then peer again. Take Slendy Vision. Peer. If I had boarded in another Echoing Truth as well. Oh, I have Veil of Summer. That's what the out is. Okay. And then add green, Veil of Summer. And then we can untap. So yeah, I think our opponent should have just targeted the Sears Emissary. So I can let this resolve now. Yeah, I think they just messed up by not targeting the Emissary. And then Grape Shot for Lethal. Wooch wooch. Glad I didn't concede and I played my way through that. We are now two and one. Two more rounds left to go. And I am falling in love with this deck. Uh, I missed casting ideas in Bound and Modern. And this might have brought me back. Let's see how we finish this out. Hey, you're still watching. Don't forget to like this video, leave a comment, and subscribe. If you're looking to make a purchase from Card Hoarder, TCG Player, or Amazon, and are looking to support us, you can open up our description down below, and in there you will find our affiliate links. Those same links are found on the homepage of the Epic Storm, but that's not all. We've included a Card Hoarder button on our website that will load the Epic Storm in your Card Hoarder cart to make life simple for you. All right, match number four, and we are on the play. Let's get it. Yorian again. Okay. So we have a Seagate. Not a whole lot else going on here. I think we're supposed to ship this. The second Psychic Preparatory is already a mulligan. We need land two, and we need a Lotus. We're just pretty far away. We have Past in Flames and Grape Shot. All right, we're going to five. So this can go get Lotus Field. I like that. All right. So we don't actually have any action spells here, which is kind of disappointing. We don't have... Um, we cross the paths. We don't have a Psychic Puppetry. No ideas inbound. So we're going to have to get kind of lucky in order to win this. Okay, so we're going to... Bolt ourselves here, play the scrying to go get the Lotus Field. All right, and they're using Scalding Tarn, probably getting a Triome here if I had to guess. And pass. Breeding Pool, okay. And Renin Six, you got it. Putting the Scalding Tarn back to hand. Uh, this is literally a dead card. So I think the Sylvan Scrying should probably be cut from the deck, if I'm being honest. But you do have to find Lotus Field. It's just a tough balance because they're dead mid combo. They, they do literally nothing. And then there's only one field. So once you have field, they're a dead card. So I'd like to see the Sylvan Scryings replaced with other cards, but it could create consistency issues. I'm just not sure. Draw. Ideas, okay. I think right now we just put the Seagate Restoration back to our hand. And try to use that as an action spell. Pass. Two mana for Ice Fang Quaddle, you got it. Two mana, what's going on here? Dash to Ragavan. I guess they could theoretically exile the Grape Shot and I'd be crying myself to sleep. Slundy Vision. I didn't want that anyway. Turns the Plains. They did play Scalding Turn this turn, so they've played their land. Ragavan returns and now they have to discard again. And the Plains. Draw. 
There's puppetry, so I can in theory try to win right now, but if they have any interaction, I'm just mega punished. We don't have any protection in our deck, which is one of the reasons I wanted to cut the Sylvan Scrying was to get a pact in there for the um, recross piles, but maybe that's not worth it. Looks like we're going to get counterspelled. Bummer, pass the turn. And Ragavan's coming back. I'm Nath, okay. So they're going to get to make four mana with the Omnath and the fetch land. Five mana with the treasure token. So they can fetch, dash the Ragavan, and then still have Counterspell open with treasure. Or just by doing this. Draw. Serum Visions. Let's cast the Visions. Dream's Grip. Do another Seagate on top. Doesn't do anything that we really want. I could burn triple grip here and cast the Seagate, but what's the point? I'm just gonna pass the turn. I guess next turn they can start um retracing counterspell. So I think I'm just forced to go for it actually. Okay, so that resolved. How about another one? Okay, twiddle. And now we need an actual miracle to win this game. Uh, so this is only going to draw two. Oh no, my bad, draws three. So we would need like twiddle, ideas and bound, something else. And we're just going to be counterspelled here. Got it. All right, so let's go to the next game. Not ideal. Okay. So I think we want the Veil of Summers and we want the Mystical Disputes. I think we want one Echoing Truth and then one Eve. Word out these Serum Visions. Word out the Florahedron. One recross, and then we have to find one more card to board out. I think it's just going to be a scrying. Try that. Okay, game two, we're on the play against this four color Yorion Omnath pile. Money pile, as the kids call it, I believe. So we have a blue source, but we don't have. This is pretty awkward. Are we supposed to keep this? All right, let's see how it plays out. So I guess with the Abundant Harvest, we want to say non-land because the Sylvan Scrying gets our Lotus. I th I do think these Scrying should be cut. All right, let's play Reach. We need to hit land number two. We drew Veil of Summer. Pass. Misty Rainforest. Okay, draw. We did not hit the land. We have to pass the turn. They so got basic forest. That's interesting. Fun and growth. Okay. Less interesting. Draw. Oh, come on, Dak. Not like this. Just discard the Sylvan Scrying, I suppose. All right. Red man, is this a Ren and Six? Impressive iteration. Okay. Misty Rainforest, you got it. Draw. There's our green source. Bun and Harvest, please resolve. And it does land. Pass the turn. I actually feel like we're in a decent spot right now. All right, the opponent used Misty Rainforest and got Ketria Triome. Okay. Flooded Strand, and they're just going to pass the turn. Seven cards in hand. I think I like just playing Balagad here. I'm not trying to rush anything. When it's activating Flooded Strand... 
Temple Garden, you got it. So they're just playing hard control at the moment. Draw. Another bell again. And go. The fairy. That's awkward. Um going to appear. I'll try to counter it. They did not. Um we do. I think I take another peer. All right, Teferi's resolved. So I think this upcoming turn is a window for us to try to win. Skurd's prismatic ending. That was a very good draw. Okay, so let's start on Veil of Summer. Counter spell, sure. And Veil of Summer. So if this resolves, we'll draw a card. We hit the puppetry. That was insane. Okay. So let's play our Lotus Field. Sacrifice these two. Whittle. So now we have four mana. Dream Scrip. Untap the Lotus Field. Now we can play Recross. So, oddly enough, because Piers are a first card, we want to put, like, four bad cards on top. So, we'll put, like, three turn timbers. One, two, three. And then, I don't know, um, this Veil of Summer. And then we want to put all the ideas. Then all the reach through mists. Grape shot. Here. Uh, and then we can put some twiddle effects. And then the bottom can just be random. Actually, I'll put Ave down there. That's fine. Okay. Force Indigation is their top card. So we can put the turn. Oh no! I just messed up. I wanted that to be on top. Because now I'm going to end up bottoming a ideas mound. Whoops. Yeah, that was just a mistake. So now there's an ideas on the bottom of my deck that I didn't want to be there. Whoops. Big old dummy. Like, I don't think it's going to be relevant, but it's still a mistake. Okay. Cast ideas. They're at 14. Reach. From 11. Reach again. Yes. Reach again. From 13. I'm just going to play a few more spells to potentially beat something silly. But I'm not going to show them past in flames. No need. They don't need to know about all my tricks. Okay, untap. Yes. You're through depths. Let's take a Seagate Restoration. Cause it... All right, let's cast it. All right, we just drew a whole bunch of junk. And let's just end the game with this Grape Shot. All right, so we've taken game number two over Money Pile. One game left to go. Let's see if we can get it. I do wonder if I should be boarding in the... Oop, our opponent just conceded. Too afraid. They saw the power of Twiddle Storm. They were shivering in their boots, and they just decided to leave. I don't blame them. I would leave, too. This deck's just way too good. <laughs> Match number five is coming right up. If you're looking for more great Magic the Gathering content, definitely check out the Eternal Glory podcast. It is myself, Brian Cook, alongside Brian Koval and Phil Gallagher. We primarily discuss Legacy. That said, a lot of what we talk about transcends all formats. We're available on all major podcast platforms. 
All right, the fifth and final match, and our opponent once again has revealed Yorion. All right, people love their money pile, I guess. Temple Garden, okay. Giver Run, so okay, so this is like a green white hate bears esque deck. Uh, probably not going to bode well for us, if I'm being honest. We're just going to play a tap land and pass the turn. We do have to find Lotus Field. It is step number one. One nice thing is that I can actually hard cast the Salundi Vision uh, to help dig for it. Stone Forge, I don't mind that. So they're probably getting Cauldra complete here, if I had to guess. We're at a Fire Nice, okay. Getting in there for the chip damage with Giver. So we were going to fall the 19 draw. Boom! That finds it. So I think we play the Slundy Vision here. And then go get our Lotus Field. Land. Okay. So next turn we could theoretically try to win as well. Ooh, Ghost Quarter is going to be brutal here. Damn, that's just strip mine. Why would they do that to me? Very, very rude. Stone Forge Mystic, probably putting Cauldra into play. Nope, Sword of Fire Ice. Okay, so they didn't even have Cauldra in hand. Draw. So, funnily enough, I could play uh, the... Or a Hedron here is a blocker. <laughs> or if I don't block, I could tap it for a green next turn. But, I mean, they have the sword. They would shock it. Um, I think I just play a tap land. Pass the turn. All right. They're going for the beat down. So we're going to take six damage here. And then we can attempt to win the game on our turn. Let me win the game. Don't do anything mean. I said don't do anything mean. Come on. All right. We're getting crushed by ghost quarters here. This garbage Sylvan scrying. Um, I think we just play another land past the turn. Please quit destroying my lands. Not very nice. Now, Stoneforge is getting in, so we're going to take... Five here going to seven. Right? Basic planes into. Oh, you gotta be kidding me. Oh, we just lost. We were so close, and then the double ghost quarter happened. We don't have an out to this. Damn, that's a bummer. Yeah, we're just flat dead to the Archon. Okay. Womp womp. Alright, so we definitely want these Echoing Truths, this member. Maybe even the Ave. I'm not sure on that. Three cards coming in. I think we just board out the Serum Vision. Like, maybe one Balagat. Or not Balagat, um, three Cross. I'm not convinced that we actually want the Ave. All right, game number two. We're on the play. Yorian has been revealed. Once again, we just have to find Lotus and this hand goes bananas. All right, keep. Gonna have to just get lucky. Vision pass. Brush land. Either vial. Okay, draw. So that, in theory, finds Lotus Field next turn. Reach through mists. Okay, pass. Rush land. And besage you. We're just getting crushed. Yep. That hurt. Draw. I think we just got buried. Besage you and Ghost Quarter. Too strong. Too strong. Modern Maverick getting me hardier. Well, let's pretend that went differently. But um, 
And I'm going to concede that. I just meant that they crushed me. Nothing perverted. Come on. Um, and that's the league. Just Ghost Corner Besage is too strong. Okay, so I didn't love the Sylvan Scryings. I do think that you probably want one main deck answer. I have Nowhere is interesting because of the Arcane theme. It's pretty free to play. Um, it could just be a main deck Echoing Truth. I'd also be interested in main deck copies of Pact Negation, but I don't know how good those actually are. Uh, Sylvan Scrying does have some value, but in your deck that also has Recross the Pads and Abundant Harvest, it felt like there's too many search effects for the One Lotus. Maybe I'm wrong. Let me know what you think. Hopefully you enjoyed this video. Thank you for watching. Take care. Keep storming. And thank you for the sweet donation deck, Colby. I really do appreciate it. Um, yeah, so yeah, have a great day. Hey, Brand Cook here. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please like and subscribe, but also follow the social media channels down below. If you want to support this content directly, I would recommend going to theepicstorm.com shop. And if you need a little bit of assistance with the Epic Storm to get to that next level, I would recommend going to theepicstorm.com tutoring. Don't worry, there's more great content coming right up.